welcome to our Total Wine viewers at home. We are so excited to have you with us and equally delighted to introduce our two special guests. The first, of course, needs no introduction, Mary J. Blige. Hello, everyone. Mary has eight multi-platinum albums, nine Grammy Awards, plus a staggering 32 nominations, two Academy Award nominations, two Golden Globe nominations, her own jewelry brand, Sister Love, her own fragrance, My Life, and of course now, Sun Goddess Wines. So yeah. thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, so nice to be here. I'm also very pleased to introduce Mr. Marco Fantanel, CEO of Fantanel Winery, with whom Mary has worked very closely to create these wines. He represents the third generation of this world-class winery, started by his grandfather, which is today not only an internationally prestigious winery, but a real ambassador of the art of Friulian winemaking throughout the world. So welcome, Marco. Good morning or good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for being with us today. So Mary, tell us, what inspired you to create your own wine label? I happened to be on tour with Maxwell three years ago and his um, friends asked me, you know, I was drinking white wine and they asked me, um, you know, why don't I do a white wine? And I just immediately said yes. And so uh, I guess the inspiration was um, just loving, just loving white wine, just, just loving Pinot Grigio. That was, that's my favorite wine. Before you knew it, I, I was down in Friuli, Italy, tasting wines, how, you know, tasting what I wanted my wines to taste like. Uh, meeting up with, you know, with Marco Fantanel and his family and just his beautiful property, which is the winery and um, just, you know, going through the history and um, the uh, knowledge of what makes these wines, what makes white wines and Pinot Grigios, you know, in the first place. So Marco, tell us a little bit about that first visit from Mary. What stood out to you for a partnership that you thought this is really going to work? But first of all, I mean, uh, for us was a, a big surprise uh, to receive a phone call from uh, Mary J and uh, her to come with uh, her staff and her uh, team of people coming to Friuli Venezia Giulia. And this was the first sign of, uh, of uh, a, a successful path we built together in uh, three years. This is, a, this is a really important point because she came to uh, study, she came to uh, uh, meet uh, my family, meet the people, understand the area, understand the terroir, the climate, and all the process uh, we have uh, to make, uh, you know, high-end wines. And um, I mean, this is uh, everything, you know, because when you uh, move uh, a group of people uh, and you come to personally check uh, is mean, it, this means a lot. Uh, it means that uh, you care, you have passion, uh, you want to learn and you want to make something really, uh, really fantastic. And so the visit was, uh, was a visit of three days. Uh, we went, uh, you know, to all our properties in the in in uh, in the hills of Colio on the border with Slovenia, where we have our uh, you know best vineyards, we went to the mountains on uh, the village of Ramandolo, uh, different terroir, different microclimate, and we went to uh, Spilimbergo, where we have the main uh, winery with the main property. And there, for three days, we did a lot of tasting and we study every single detail. And she was really important because uh, uh, she was uh, giving us uh, what is uh, what is her love for wine their passion and how she is uh, you know she was uh, thinking about uh, a personal wine mary what was that like for you as a wine lover who i know that you love white wine you love rosé what was it like tasting through all of these different cuvées and sort of giving the direction of your vision? Well, um, the tasting was a lot of fun because we got 
you know, I tasted so many wines. I was, my team and I, we ended up really, you know, kind of tipsy and feeling great. That was beautiful. And then following that, uh, Marco and him had a, Marco and his family had a dinner. I got to meet his family and, and they were just so beautiful and warm. People are not that warm when you first meet them and they were just warm. It was like a match made in heaven. And um, I love, I love Sonia, his wife. I, I, I love his children. I love Marco. Like we're family now for real from that day. And um, right after, after that, I went home and then we went through the process of sending the wines back and forth to me to taste. And it was, it was beautiful because the first time it came, it was like, mm, that's not it. The second time it came, it was like, wow. <laughs> it was like, whoa, whoa this is, I mean, it was just perfect. I, and, and just tastes great and expensive. So the, the experience was, was great, just, just having new family. And how long was that process then from that first weekend to the very beautiful bottle that we now have in hand? Well, the whole process in itself was three years because I was on the road and I was busy and, you know, I had a lot of things going on in my life, but it, it took about three years to, you know, get the, uh, everything correct. The bottle, you know, when, when it finally came back, it was like, we, we changed it and it was a, wasn't even that much time that they, you know, they changed it because I don't think we had that much time. So it, it, it was very, um, it was a little bit of time, you know, they got it done really quickly to change, to change the label in the bottle. Amazing. And, you know, you're certainly not one who does things by halves and good things take time. So this three year journey was really, truly worth the wait. I'm sure you agree, Marco. Yeah, for sure. I mean, everything, I mean, uh, you, a uh, success uh, is made uh, studying a, a, every single day detail. So here we been uh, uh, fully involved and Mary was uh, our uh, you know main uh, person that uh, she was giving us the direction and checking every single detail because uh, you need to be very precise you cannot we are professional people and of course uh, we cannot uh, the, uh, presenting a wine that uh, has uh, the signature of a celebrity we cannot uh, go out uh, and make a follower say, ah, oh, okay, it's, it's okay. It's, uh, no, we want to get uh, the project was to, to introduce the wine, launch the wines and make a success. Three years seems a lot, but in reality it's not because, uh, uh, you know, we had to work a lot in the vineyard to select only the best parcel to grow this, uh, the Pinot Grigio. Then I think uh, <clears throat> we had the amazing intuition uh, to make a, uh, uh, the Pinot Grigio Ramato, uh, for instance, authentic, uh, natural, because, uh, you know, we are launching a Pinot Grigio with uh, this uh, copper color. And in reality, you know, hundreds of years ago in Friuli, the Pinot Grigio was all copper, was all Ramato, uh, because uh, the grape, as you know, is not a white uh, grape, as people believe, but it's a red grape. And so doing a, a, a maceration, you extract color, and you give this amazing color. And uh, so we have been also brave uh, to launch uh, a Pinot Grigio Ramato because a lot of people, they say, well, what, what it is? And then we tell the story. So I think uh, also Mary that uh, when uh, she came to the vineyard, and realized that the color of the, the grape is red and said, why Pinot Grigio is white in America? And said, uh, because they don't do uh, the, the maceration. So we decided to do it. Absolutely. I mean, what strikes me about you both is authenticity. It's amazing to hear all of the, the tiny things that you may not see or, or know just from tasting the wine um, that you both put into it to produce it. Well, thank you, Marco, for being so authentic <laughs> because, you know, when I went, when I went to Friuli, Italy, everything just felt so beautiful and so fresh and the air was fresh and everything was just the food was fresh and just, you know, it's nice to have a partner who does everything, you know, from the heart and with patience and authenticity. I'm, I'm just so, so pleased and, and grateful to have a partner like Marco. I am getting a little thirsty talking about these wines, okay. but just before we taste, um, would you tell us the story, Mary, that led to this name, Sun Goddess, and the packaging that we see today? Okay, well, 
Sun Goddess, the name comes from um, a family member who was my sister. When I was little, I always loved the sun more than everybody in my family. And I, I still love the sun that way. And so I would go away, you know, on trips to islands with my sister. And, you know, we'll hang out in the sun one day, you know, that's the first day. Then the second day, she like, she's like, you know, a sun goddess. She called me the sun goddess. It's too hot, sun goddess. I can't take, I, I can't mess with you today. So she gave me the name sun goddess. And I ran with it because I think that wine is very, um, you know, it's, it's, it's compatible to, to the sun. It, it, it changes the mood. It changes, you know, it warms your body. It makes you happy. It makes, you know, it changes everything. It makes everything lighter. So why not be compared to, why not have a wine be compared to the sun? Because it makes everybody smile. The sun goddess. <laughs> and the label is a woman bathing in, in a burst of sun. That's what that is. It is a perfect name. I love the story behind it. So should we taste? We should. Is anyone thirsty? We are, we are. So we start with the Pinot Grigio Ramato and uh, it's a beautiful copper color. So first of all, I must say that uh, everything we do with San Gades, uh, I mean, uh, is really, uh, um, is really, a priority today at the Fantinelle Winery. Uh, so we are starting from a, a select parcel in the village of Spilimbergo. Uh, the property is a 100 hectares vineyards property in between two rivers, Tagliamento and Meduna. Uh, rivers are important because uh, they, they are stony soil terroir rivers and uh, the, the big stones. Uh, and in all our property, we have for 30, 40 meters stones. This means that uh, we extract from uh, the, the ground a lot of minerality. And uh, as well, uh, important is the proximity of the property to the mountains, to the Dolomites of Friuli, Venezia, Giulia. They are only six kilometers, few miles away. And uh, this is very important because uh, um, the climate, the microclimate we have at the property is unique uh, due to the fact we are close to the mountains. We have uh, cold winds coming down during summertime and uh, these uh, are uh, allowing uh, to load the temperature and to refresh the grapes. Uh, as you know, for wh white wines, uh, Friuli is a kind of uh, one of the most important regions in the world. Uh, for sure the best region of uh, uh, of Italy for white wines and the best region of Italy for Sauvignon Blanc and Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio is indigenous to Friuli Venezia Giulia. The fact Mary came to us is uh, because uh, she want right away to go to the best place to make the best Pinot Grigio. And as you know, we already won a very important award uh, with the first vintage, a, a gold medal at uh, the, the, the Master of Wines comp uh, uh, Rosé competition, they, go, they gave us uh, in, uh, in June a very special award that uh, this is the sign that this uh, wine has really the character, the, 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 uh, uh, the characteristic to be a really fantastic wine. So um, the, the, the property is, uh, is uh, planted with, uh, we planted the Pinot Grigio vineyards in, uh, uh, 25 years ago, um, the, 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 the vineyards we used to produce the grapes for the, the San Gades. We have 5,000 vines per hectare. We, we grow, the yield is about 1.2, 1.3 kilos of grape per vine. So we have a reduced yield to make sure we have a wine with a great uh, concentration. You know, the, the way we grow the grapes uh, is uh, sustainable. So we try to avoid any chemicals in the vineyards at all. And um, we hand harvest because uh, if you want to make uh, a, a Ramato uh, uh, Pinot Grigio, you need to have a perfect grape. And uh, because uh, we do a maceration, so we soft press uh, the grape and, uh, and we do a, a, a extraction of the color naturally from the skin for six, eight hours. Uh, to do this, we need uh, to select uh, uh, manually. We have a group of agronomists going to the vineyards 
uh, uh, that uh, they select only the best grapes because uh, it's a technique that you need to be to to you can uh, make a kind of maceration and and then we do as you mentioned before a fermentation on natural yeast. You need to have a, a grapes in perfect health, and this is the only way to make a wine at this uh, level. Okay, uh, so. Good news is that this year we, we just finished uh, uh, last uh, Friday the harvest of the Pinot Grigio uh, 2020. Uh, today, we, I mean, the current vintage is uh, 2019, which is uh, in, in the market now just released, and the one we are tasting now. Uh, this wine, uh, this uh, vintage is uh, really fantastic. I mean, we, we, we lost 15% uh, of the production but uh, we believe we're going to have amazing, amazing wine. Anyway. It's a fascinating let's... style. Before we taste, I would just love to hear from Mary. Uh, why did you choose this style? Were you familiar with Romato before? No, I wasn't. And um, Marco, that's what I was saying earlier about the education. You know, I received so much information about wine. Like I said, I didn't even know that Pinot Grigio was a red grape and that you can do that. So, you know, it, it, it's just amazing to, to get that information. And, you know, I, this, is, this is what it was all about. It was about learning and now I know. So yeah, it's all Marco, Marco with the information. <laughs> and now I have it, I can spread it, you know. So. Yeah, but this is a great team because uh, I mean, uh, we, 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 we could not launch a Ramato without you. This is the, the reality, the truth. And I think the combination between us, uh, between our family, because uh, we are families, uh, as you mentioned, since the moment you came to visit Friuli, I think we cannot do this uh, without uh, a, a, a personality like yours. Well, thank you. I can't do it without authenticity like yours. And you can't lose with love. And from the time I touched down in Italy, that's what I felt. felt. And I needed, and, and I knew it was love because I was going through such a terrible time. I was like just fresh out of a divorce, and you know the energy. You know, I was, I'm very sensitive to energy. And when I landed, I was like, "Oh man, these people are beautiful. I really need this hug. I really need this what they're giving." And his wife is so amazing. And it's, so this was this this product was made out of love. This baby was made out of love, and this is why it's doing so well because it's been conceived with with love. <laughs> and it's such an amazing way to bring this style to the forefront as as Marco says we do need you for that I would say I don't know maybe 90% or 99% of wine drinkers in the US would not know that this is what Pinot Grigio looks like we only see the white wine here so often well leave it to me to open up a new lane that's what I've, I've done with my career from the first time I stepped into the music business I opened up a new lane for women all over the world to do what I'm doing or do something similar to what I'm doing. So here we are again, Mary J. Blige and Marco, we're opening up a new lane for yeah. Pinot Grigio Romato. <laughs> we want to lead the, the new category okay. <laughs> of Pinot Grigio Romato. I mean, I want this wine in every single store and I want the people really to enjoy it because it's uh, made with love and passion, with culture, with uh, professionalism from uh, my family and Mary J. Yes, here's to you guys. Cheers, uh, salute. Cheers. <laughs> mm, it's so good. So, it's Marco, good. for those of us who are enjoying it now, tell us about what we're tasting. So, this is uh, the Pino, San Gades Pinot Grigio Ramato 2019. Harvest was uh, the, the first week of September 2019. We did a hand harvest uh, at the property. Uh, we uh, use for people are more into wines. Uh, you should know that uh, we use a clone varietal of Pinot Grigio that was reproduced at the property with the collaboration of the most important nursery for vines in the world, which is uh, in uh, Rauchedo, in very like 10 kilometers from our uh, uh, village. And uh, so this Pinot Grigio has a uh, character has uh, a lot of aromatics because the clone varietal is uh, developing a lot of aromatics. As I mentioned before, we do hand harvest. We bring the grapes, uh, only the best grapes to the to the cellar. We soft press 
and we leave inside the press machine a low temperature uh, to extract the best flavor from the from the, the the skin and the color. So we do a maceration for six eight hours. Then uh, we move uh, the skin from the juice and we put uh, a low temperature the juice in small tanks uh, where we do uh, a ferm natural fermentation. Uh, so we leave uh, the natural yeast present inside the juice to start uh, the fermentation and uh, which uh, takes about 22 days. Okay. When it's finished, uh, we just leave, leave uh, the wine uh, for like uh, five, six months on the natural yeast. And then uh, we do one filtration before bottling. So the wine is very natural and uh, is uh, very, uh, I mean, you can uh, uh, try the typicity of this wine. Some people ma could say, ah, ma this is not Pinot Grigio uh, because they are, Pinot Grigio in America is uh, clear, crispy, easy, we call uh, water in Friuli because we are very proud of our Pinot Grigio, which is the best in the world. And uh, the fact that we are growing in, on a stony soil terroir, we bring a lot of minerality. So if you try this wine, the nose is uh, really interesting, intense, uh, it's fruity. You have a peach, you have uh, some apple, uh, you you really enjoy it because uh, the, the, the nose is very intense and natural. I, I would say natural. And uh, then when you put in the palate, you, you feel right away the minerality, which is very smooth, but very intense. It's like a velvet, it's like silk in your mouth, uh, the glass of uh, this Pinot Grigio. And uh, of course, um, uh, the fact is uh, with this beautiful rosé color is, we call copper ramato. Uh, you extract also some tannins from uh, from the skin, and so the the wine is very intense and long in your palate. And uh, this is a perfect wine to enjoy as an aperitivo or with some, uh, you know, when you meet people in your garden or the pool, you open your bottle at uh, right temperature, it's just beautiful to drink itself, or to match with some seafood, some uh, shrimps, uh, some uh, pasta with shrimps, or with uh, uh, pasta with vongole, or some, uh, some uh, cold cuts like uh, prosciutto, San Daniele prosciutto, we enjoy in Friuli, you know, we are famous to make prosciutto. And so it's a, a great wine that you enjoy uh, all the year round. It's not uh, because sometimes they say a rosé is a summer wine. I mean, I would like to invite the, our consumer or the people are, you know, watching this presentation today to say, no, you can enjoy a glass of white wine every day, all year round, overall at this uh, level of quality. I agree. It is so let's make it toast. Chin chin, we say. <laughs> it is such a textured and versatile wine because, as you said, there's a little bit of the tannins. It's got this vibrancy and that that mineral note that just makes it that you could yeah. have it with so many food pairings at all times of year. Yeah. Mary, do you have anything to add about how you enjoy it, what you like it with, or that cover? Well, I love it with um, pasta, um, shrimp pasta, lamb, um, uh, prosciutto, um, just just different kind of, those are the foods mostly that I like it with. Um, the the uh, Pinot Grigio Romano Rosé, yeah, they are definitely love I it. like those pairings, because yeah. it's really got body and intensity. Yes. Yes, and pretty much anything you want, but those are, those are gonna taste the best, you know, those are gonna, uh, be the best combination, I, th I think. And it's just so light, it's so, so light. You can, you have to be careful with this. It's so light and it tastes <laughs> good that you can go through like three bottles <laughs> with two friends. <laughs> it is very yeah. easy to drink, that is for sure. Yeah, I would say it's, uh, it's easy and is is uh, I would say it's not a light wine, uh, literally speaking. It's an elegant wine because uh, in reality you have a, a big body 
a length, a structure, a lot of minerality, fantastic acidity. The acidity is uh, there because it, we are cultivating the grapes uh, close to the mountains. And so it's, a, a, it's simple, but it's very complex. It's very elegant, the wine. It's very pleasant. It's very pleasant. And you drink uh, like this uh, because uh, it's really well made and it's natural, you know. What I like about both of these wines is that you can really analyze them and dig into them and find all of this complexity. It's there. Or you can simply enjoy it. They, they really work both ways for however you'd like to drink them. So let's talk about the Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. Mary, so, tell us, what was the style goal here for the Sauvignon Blanc? The style goal for the Sauvignon Blanc was Marco. You take it away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sauvignon, I mean, there are three, three areas in the world where you can make a, a really authentic good Sauvignon. One is France, Bordeaux. This, uh, and in Friuli, we have an influence from, uh, you know, uh, Bordeaux because uh, we reproduce uh, like uh, uh, 100 years ago, uh, grapes uh, coming from that area of France, like Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Sauvignon Blanc. And, uh, and then uh, the other area, as everybody knows, is New Zealand. And in Italy, the best uh, region is Friuli, Venezia, Giulia. So there are every year international competition uh, focus on tasting Sauvignon Blancs. And every year in the ranking of the top 10, there are like three, four, five producer from Friuli Venezia Giulia. So Sauvignon adjusted very well to our terroir because need the cool climate, um, uh, adjusted very well to our terroir. So uh, Friuli is famous uh, to be one of the three best places in the world for Sauvignon Blanc. And tell us about how it expresses itself in Friuli, obviously very differently to in New Yeah, it's Italy. different. We are more, let's say, it's different from New Zealand because some people, they say, ah, we love uh, New Zealand Sauvignon. It, this is more French, uh, old uh, world style, more classic, uh, but it has a beautiful, you know, uh, flavor that uh, connect your, you know, uh, brain right away to this grape that is very specific, you know, in, in the profile of the taste. Uh, so this, uh, the, the grapes, uh, production is smaller than Pinot Grigio, we, we, we should say. So this wine is not producing big quantities. Uh, we do the harvest uh, just b before Pinot Grigio, a week before, because uh, uh, Sauvignon needs a, a perfect maturation, but we cannot uh, go you know, if we, uh, let's say, harvest uh, a day later, we don't get these flavors, this amazing flavor that uh, everybody's uh, searching one, enjoying a glass of Sauvignon Blanc. Uh, so terroir is similar, uh, same gravelly soil, big stones, uh, close to the mountain. So Sauvignon calls a cool climate because it doesn't need uh, at all, uh, you know, uh, warm, temperature, you need cool climate because we need to preserve the flavors. In this case, uh, you have uh, right away, you know, uh, yellow pepper, melon, uh, watermelon, uh, peach uh, is a bit tropical, you know. When you put in, uh, you have some, uh, you know, green flavors as well, which is a characteristic of the Sauvignon from Friuli Venezia Giulia. In the mouth is uh, just uh, full of fruits, of melon, of pep or, or, or yellow pepper, of uh, uh, peach, uh, apricot, uh, a bit of passion fruit, uh, and uh, the acidity is just amazing. Sauvignon Blanc needs acidity. That's why we cultivate close to the mountains because we need the cool winds coming down in summer to preserve the flavor. And Sauvignon Blanc uh, needs. Uh, just a little bit of sun, not too much, because otherwise you burn the flavor, the, the aromas, the classic aroma of the Sauvignon. I believe this is a really well-made Sauvignon, natural. We do the same fermentation. So in this case, we don't do the skin contact for six hours, like with the Pinot Grigio Ramato, but uh, we do a natural fermentation, naturalist, to have a very natural 
um, Sauvignon. Another the good thing, uh, when you do this kind of work, you need to have the best winemaker in the cellar, so I have a great team of people, because this wine is difficult to ferment without uh, indigenous grapes. Uh, is, uh, and, but uh, what we can guarantee to our consumer that uh, this uh, wine can last uh, very long. So you can enjoy after three, four, five years and the wine will be just uh, perfect, you know, because it's made in a natural way. Absolutely. And you've got that gorgeous acidity, which preserves it and carries it through. And you capture so much freshness up front. This is definitely a wine that can hold. And this is perfect with pasta, with gnocchi, with tagliatelle, with a bit of sauce, mm -hmm. and with a mozzarella, burrata, and uh, appetizer, some uh, uh, fried fish like calamari, or even with uh, beautiful sushi, sashimi, you know, that is... Uh, it's perfect because this acidity and this aromatics, they clean your palate. So, fantastic wine. You are making me unbelievably hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask Mary what you like to pair it with, but that was a, a huge selection of pairings. Exactly. <laughs> Everything she said. <laughs> Everything Papa said. I mean, definitely seafood. I'm a sushi eater, sashimi eater. And it definitely goes great with, you know, the, the raw fish. It's really good. And um, it's everything, just pretty much everything is what you prefer, you know. Mm. These are wines that I think you can really enjoy at any time of day um, and on so many different occasions. Mary, what are those special moments where you most like to enjoy your wines? Um, well, right now, just, you know, especially during the pandemic, um, in quarantine, just, you know, the moments that I get to see my friends and my family and we get to have, you know, my girlfriends and I, we get to have a drink together or we're, sit, we're by the pool and we're, you know, drinking and listening to music and, you know, we don't get to do it a lot, but those are the moments that are important. So right now it's going to be great for holidays. It's going to be great for birthdays. It's going to be great for Valentine's Day. It's going to be great for everything. So, but, you know, we, we haven't had any holidays or birthdays yet. My birthday's coming in January, so, and Marco's is too. <laughs> yeah. um, so it is gonna be great for our birthdays, but um, it really, it really um, blessed a lot of people during the pandemic. Like my friends tasted, I've, get, I've given them bottles of it and they're like, oh my God, I need more. Everyone needs more wine. My mother <laughs> loves it. And she's very picky and finicky. And she's like, Mary, I need some more wine. So. It's been great just bringing people together and because it's just so uplifting, you know, it's, it's not a downer. It's just a, up. I, I love anything up, anything up. I love it. It truly is. And with this 2020, we really need all the uplifting things we can get. Yes, <laughs> yes <we do. laughs> So a number of our guests had questions about how wine ties into music for you. Is there anything in particular that you would be inclined to listen to as you enjoy these wines? Well, um, I, I always start off first with like something easy. When I, when I begin to drink the, um, um, drink the wine, it's, I start mm -hmm. with jazz. I always start off like with like a jazz. And then the more wine we drink, then I go into R&B. And then the tipsier we get, <laughs> we go into R&B and hip hop. And then we go into, and, and before you know it, you know, it's, you know, we keep it, we keep it mellow though. We keep it mellow with, 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 with the wine, you, you know, we, we try not to go so crazy, but it's a fun wine. So it, it gets you, it gives you a nice buzz. So you're not belligerent and staggering, but you are just having such a good time. And the music just really is a great combination with it. If you play, if you have the right music playing, but you, for me, I have to start off with the jazz. I have to start off with something light, no words, just some music then it'll pick up from there. <laughs> I love it. So you match the music or the, the energy of the music to the energy of the wine and what you're feeling and experiencing as you drink it. Yes, yes. And mostly um, I need it, you know, it, it, it should be a peaceful start. It should be a peaceful and then, you, you know, you go gra gradually go into, all right, it's party time. <laughs> but you can't just start, you know, this is, this is a real... You know, you have to be classy with it. You know, you can't just go, you know, crazy with it. <laughs> I love it. 
Marco, do you have anything else to add about these wines that we haven't talked about and the experience of drinking them? I just invite uh, our clients, our consumer to enjoy um, at home uh, with uh, their loves, uh, when they have a party, when they have a birthday party, <clears throat> when they have uh, a wedding. It's very versatile, the way to consume uh, Sun Goddess. They think, uh, you know, the name is beautiful, you know, and the uh, sun is important for, uh, for our, you know, life uh, is everything, you know, it's important for the grapes to grow safe and healthy. It's important for human being. Uh, so I think um, is uh, is uh, a wine that uh, will help a lot of people in the long run because we have a lot of project with Mary and uh, we discuss uh, discussed when she was uh, visiting us and uh, so now we are in the in the only on the first step of our project together and uh, we I'm sure that we're gonna be for many many years together to make uh, amazing projects and also we want to give back something and so we will, we will talk about this uh, in the future in the near future Yes, and I can't wait to come back to Italy, like when they let us over there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, next year. Look, so don't, don't, don't make program for next uh, vintage, you know. Next summer, you, you'll be in Friuli harvesting with us. Uh, yeah. And uh, because it's important you to bring your energy here. And uh, I'm sure that, uh, you know, the, the, the wine will uh, become even better when uh, you will be here during the 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 the. the, the the, the fermentation, the harvest, uh, and it's going to be amazing. Yes. So next summer, you, your holidays will be in Friuli, Venezia, Giulia, Mary. I, I love it. I, with I your beautiful it. team, you, with your family, bring your mother, bring everybody. We, we do uh, the yeah. harvest uh, in Friuli. And we will sing uh, and drink. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you teach me to, to sing and I teach you to make uh, good wines. Yes, yes, yes. I'm, great, I'm great. sure you're going to become a fantastic way maker and I will, I will be a, a, the worst singer you ever heard. <laughs> you can learn. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Thank you both so much for bringing your energy to us today and to our viewers. We can't all be together, but one day in Italy, hopefully, I invite you to shop Sun Goddess Wines at your local Total Wine and More store, or you can go online to totalwine.com and shop these products and also learn about other tastings that they have coming up. So it's just been a wonderful time with you both. Thank yeah. you again, Mary, for taking us through your journey and sharing these wines. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye. Grazie mille.